Hunter Renfro continues to shine. The Week 11 Wide Receiver Stock Watch is coming up next. Coming into Week 11, there was a wide receiver I was really keeping my eyes on. Somebody that hasn't made it into the circle of trust yet. The the talent, oh, it's there. The talent is fucking there. But he hadn't put it all together, and he really hadn't done it in back-to-back games this season. And the wide receiver I'm talking about is Devonta Smith for the Philadelphia Eagles. 85% rostered in ESPN leagues. This guy is trending into a high-end flex after what he did in Week 10. Talking about a guy that has back-to-back weeks over 20 PPR points. He scored two touchdowns against the old college teammate Patrick Sertan and the Denver Broncos in Week 10. He has an exploitable schedule moving forward and an offense that is so has teams so concerned with the running game, it opens things up for him in the passing game. And it really does look like maybe Jalen Hurst is starting to take strides moving forward. And maybe some of that has to do with the fact that Nick Sirianni took a little bit of that offense off of his shoulders and started running a little bit more of that offense through the running game. And I am a big, big believer that that is the number one thing for a successful quarterback who isn't ready to be the guy. And Jalen Hurst is a guy that's got a ton of talent, but he's a little up and down. And that has made it a little up and down for Devontae Smith this year. And if if we're going to run the ball more in Philly, I understand that that means passing the ball less, but I actually think that's a good thing for Smith. And why do I think that's a good thing for Smith? When defenses get so worried about a prolific run game, it opens up explosive plays in the passing game. And we've seen that the last couple weeks. And no matter what you think about the Denver Broncos, there is a lot of talent in that secondary. And when it's clicking, it does really well. But obviously, it got beat last week by Smith and Jalen Hurst, who... Despite the fact that Smith only had six targets, caught four of them, and had two touchdowns. So he is a guy that's starting to find the end zone. He's making big plays. Oh, I wonder why that is. Because teams are worried about that that running game. And I really do think it is an extremely exploitable schedule for Smith moving forward. And honestly, outside of Dallas Goder, Smith is the only game in town when we're talking about the passing game. Jalen Rager is an epic failure right now as a draft pick. Quez Watkins is incredibly inconsistent. Has a lot of upside, but he doesn't have enough consistency upside. The one guy who runs polished routes, has amazing hands, and the ability to really kind of outmaneuver corners is Devontae Smith. And he is the explosive player in this offense. So... Moving forward, I expect better things for Devonta Smith. I think he has the ability to kind of get into that wide receiver two status and PPR leagues moving forward, and even in standard leagues. Because like I said, because of the way they're running this offense now, it's lending to more explosive plays in the passing game, and that means Smith is going to have more explosive plays, which is good, obviously, in standard. So this is a guy that has the ability to work his way into wide receiver two status. He is in high-end flex play, a guy that you really do have to start thinking about using moving forward. A guy that's really taking advantage of a lot of opportunity right now is Hunter Renfro, and he has been getting a lot of opportunity throughout the entire year, but they need a wide receiver to lean on now more than ever with the exodus of Henry Ruggs and, you know, Deshaun Jackson coming in, not just, just, just not, not good enough. He's, he. He might be good for a couple plays a game, but if there's one guy that they can really lean on in this offense, it's Hunter Renfro, a guy that's still 
about 23% available in leagues. He's got touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks. He's got 18 targets the last two weeks. And honestly, you know, if he's not reaching that nine target mark, he's typically in the eight or seven target mark. So he has a very comfortable floor of usage. Granted, his yards per catch isn't there, but they have been using him more in the end zone. And he's definitely a trusted receiver of Derek Carr and PPR. He's got a very, very safe floor. You know, it's 14 catches over the last two weeks. So 18 targets, 14 catches. He's been extremely efficient. I believe he has nine targets and seven catches in both weeks nine and weeks 10. He's incredibly efficient. There's a reason why Derek Carr likes this guy. He is a possession receiver, so he's not a big play guy. So not as much of a, a high-end flex wide receiver three in standard. He's more probably a low-end flex in standard just because he still isn't a huge touchdown guy. But in PPR, man, he's going to get you catches. He's going to get you some yards. He's going to have a really safe floor. And every once in a while, like he has the last couple of weeks, he's going to find the end zone. So Hunter Renfro right now, he's trending up. They need somebody to pass the ball to. You know, they've been spreading around a little bit. R Brian Edwards got involved, finally got going this last week. You know, Zay Jones has caught a couple balls the last couple weeks. They brought in Jackson, but Renfro now really seems to be the guy in the wide receiver room that Carr is going to lean on, you know, and outside of that is Waller. So, so you know, he's going to get some other guys involved, Derek Carr, but but it really is going to be Renfro that's going to get the most opportunity for this offense. So he has been trending up. Not a huge trend up, but, you know, he's been trending up all year. And that's that's exciting for anybody who likes Renfro and, and what he brings to this team. Another guy that's trending up. Now, this isn't based off of his performance on Monday Night Football, but based on I would say a, a couple different things, you know, and, and we'll go over them, right? And that's Odell Beckham Jr., 87% rostered, so still available in 13% of leagues. I understand why he's available out there. He hasn't been really good in several years. Let's let's face it, he wasn't good in Cleveland. He struggled there the last little bit in New York, and he just hasn't been very good. But now we're in L.A. where... Cooper Cup's the fucking dude. He is the fucking man. That guy is, is alpha fucking dog, right? So defenses have to treat him as such. So Odell all of a sudden isn't going to get the primary corner uh, to to have to deal with. So he's, he's going to get softer coverage. And, and then you take into account that he's got a quarterback with elite passer skills. And I do mean elite. When you watch the the Manning cast, you know that these guys are talking about how Stafford does have the ability to make passes that only a handful of quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers has the ability to make. And then you combine that with the fact that now he's with Sean McVay and a winning mentality and all in franchise in the L.A. Rams. They like to score points. Monday night was a terrible example. In fact, they're on a two game losing streak, as I as I recall. But. That, that doesn't mean that this is an offense that you want to tap into. I very much believe that this is an offense that you want to tap into. And I, I'm, not, I'm not rushing to start this guy. But you, you talk about a guy in Van Jefferson. I've talked about him a lot on this, uh, on this channel. And he has been getting opportunity. I believe the last two weeks, Jefferson has seven targets in weeks nine and weeks 10, but he hasn't done much with them. He gets a lot of high value targets, a lot of the type of targets the Odell gets, but he hasn't been doing much. He hasn't got on the same page as Matt Stafford. And that I think is going to open things up for Odell. They want an explosive offense. You know, we saw one game where Van Jefferson could be explosive early on this season, right? We saw one game early on where uh, Jackson was explosive before they kicked him to the fucking curb, right? So I think they want more explosiveness out of more than Cooper Cup. There's supposed to be somebody explosive opposite of Cooper Cup. I think they want Van Jefferson to be that guy, and he hasn't been able to, to, to pick up that slack, you know? And, and Robert Woods is gone. So it just, it opens up opportunity for Odell to finally maybe live up to the talent that, 
maybe he used I maybe he doesn't have that talent anymore. Maybe he used to have it, but the talent that we've seen from him in the past. So I think Odell has the uh, ability right now to be a boom bust flex. So like I said, I'm not rushing to get him out there, but I think in this offense, he has the ability to boom. The one thing he didn't have in Cleveland, I don't, I don't think Baker Mayfield is a terrible quarterback. I, I wouldn't blame what happened in Cleveland on Ma Baker Mayfield, but I will say that Stafford has a much better opportunity of making Odell a better weapon in fantasy. So right now, boom, bust, flex, but him going to LA, him having Robert Woods go down with an ACL tear, and Van Jefferson just not grabbing that role this year opens up the door of opportunity for Odell. Not a guy that I'm rushing to put in my roster, but or in my lineup, but somebody I'm glad that I have on my roster with these last seven weeks of the season. Some guys that are trending down. Unfortunately, we're looking at a guy like Mike Williams. Man, dude, dude, Mike Williams, you were like wide receiver one, bitch. You were right there with Cooper Cup. Blow for fucking blow. You were doing so hot those first five weeks, man. You were just fucking sizzling. Yeah, and dude hasn't scored over 7.8 PPR points since week five. So he was sizzling through week five. Since then, no more than 7.8 PPR points. Hasn't, has 10 catches, but 21 targets since week five. Seeing this trend? So we're, we're, we're at week 11 now. We're at week 11. Granted, they do have a bye week in there. So, but, but he has right now, more downside than upside. In fact, we're talking about Mike Williams. I'm saying he's a flex. Right now, he's a bust flex. He's a boom bust flex, but he's busting right now, and he's busting continually. And since I'm hammering on him right now, since I'm fucking hammering on Mike Williams, you suck, Mike Williams. He'll probably be good. So let's, let's hope. Let's hope my fucking... My... My lashing out of negativity, which sometimes this works, works on Mike Williams. He starts picking up his efficiency because 10 on 21, 10 catches on 21 targets is bad, bro. It's not like you have an inaccurate quarterback. You got a good quarterback, bro. You need to figure your shit out, man. Figure your shit out, bro. Get it together. Look at what you were doing. It Like, you... You know, I, I understand they're working more through Keenan Allen. You need to show them why they need to throw you the ball and you'll get some fucking targets. But right now, Keenan Allen, dude, dude's fucking money like he always is. He's very efficient in the passing game. Take some clues, Mike Williams, because right now you're on the downtrend. You're in a flex and you're a busting flex at that. Another guy trending down. I hate to say this. I mean, this is his this is his Super Bowl 50 jersey right here. Emmanuel fucking Sanders. E number 10 for the Denver Broncos. You won a Super Bowl with us, bro. You were so key. So key in those fucking dangerous Denver fucking offenses we had, man. You were you were good bro you were you were a good wide receiver in denver and you know what you you are still a good wide receiver but right now you are a weak flex bro emmanuel sanders has made it into weak flex territory it's unfortunate because you know the very you know the first third of the season this guy was a pretty consistent play for you had a really really nice floor but when we when we you know really dissect his season when we look at his game log let's take a look at it two touchdowns this season only two none since week 5 jesus him and him and mike williams right at least he's had some upside since week 5 but he's only he only has two touchdowns he hasn't had one since week 5 he has zero 100 yard games this season and his role really has seemed to shrunk for some reason. It's shrinking a little bit. You know, Dawson Knox is back. They were using Gabriel Davis in a very similar role in week 10. You know, Stefan Diggs finally got fucking going. 
that's the Stefan Diggs we all fucking know and love and and drafted, right? Like you you've been begging for that. He came through in week 10. And part of that in the you know, uh Emmanuel Sanders really kind of taking a back seat in this offense and and that's unfortunate, but we need reliability to be in in the circle of trust and right now Emmanuel Sanders, you you've broken the circle of trust, bro. You you've worked your way out. You're in a weak flex territory. I'm not saying you can't be started, but um, I'm definitely looking elsewhere um, if I'm looking at Emmanuel Sanders as a player to put in my lineup. I'm definitely gonna look scour through the waiver wire, see if there's anything else that I can put in there right now. Because if you look at his work since the bye it's been pretty fucking weak it's unfortunate he is one of my favorite wide receiver um to watch i i've enjoyed watching him for years but um really on the downtrend at the moment and uh, finally amari cooper 98 percent rostered so he's basically rostered in all leagues uh this guy also unfortunately on the downtrend you know he's in the wide receiver three flex territory at this point started off as a wide receiver one we all remember what he did against tampa bay that was just fucking amazing but since then really only you know a couple explosive moments nothing like what we saw in week one um, you know, and when we look at the fact that he only has two games this season over 100 yards, this receiving core back to being fully healthy. They have two tight ends that they use. Michael Gallup came back, got five looks. CD Lamb is the alpha dog. Amari Cooper, I'm sorry, dude, you're taking a back seat to CD Lamb. So you're now like just kind of a cog in this offense that. Dak is only thrown for only three uh over 300 yards three times this season. So it's not as explosive in the passing game as we thought it was going to be. They're not as pass happy as we thought they were going to be coming into 2021 after we saw what Mike McCarthy did with this team in 2020. And honestly, that's a good thing for Dallas, them having a more balanced attack in, in the running game to the passing game is good for their offense, but it's bad for Amari Cooper, and he's down in the wide re- wide receiver three level. He's down in the flex level. Um, a guy that, I mean, you're, you're probably looking around, you're going, yeah, I'm starting Amari Cooper. He's in a good offense, and he is a damn good receiver, but but he's right there, man. The circle of trust is really brittle with him as well. He's kind of with the Emmanuel Sanders thing, right? I need to start seeing some work. He he has done a lot more than Sanders this year. He still is in that weekly discussion of do I want him in my Ross uh, in my lineup? But um, he has been fading, you know, this year. We only got seven games left, and does he have enough time to get back into that must start territory? I don't know, but I I don't think he will get back there. I think he is where he's going to be. I think he's going to be a wide receiver three. And he's be a flex moving forward. It's unfortunate because that's not what you drafted him to be. But I think that's where he's settling in now when we see this offense that is spreading the ball around and really is funneling most of the explosive plays through CD Lamb. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any start sit questions and you want to send them to me, I join Mike Lynch and Rashad Taylor on Sunday mornings at uh, 1080 The Fan here in Portland, Oregon for the Fantasy Scramble. We answer start sit questions for 30 minutes heading up to kickoff on Sunday morning, so 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Send in those Start sick questions to 503-250-1080. You can listen live on the Odyssey app or at the link that I will have in the description below. Again, thank you for watching. Make sure you watch the Week 11 running back stock watch.